Did you know that one-third of our greenhouse gas emissions originate from our food consumption? Everyone can cook, but do you know how much these carrots contribute to it? I wonder how can we as individuals make smart decisions considering the urgency of climate change when it comes to our foods. It is not standard human behavior to take complex facts into account, but I believe there's a way, and I'll tell you how. Six years ago, I came to Switzerland to study neuroinformatics to understand better the human brain. As a kid, I loved sitting in front of the computer. I connected with the ideas of breaking systems apart, solving problems, and creating artificial life. There was a vote when I finished school. Everyone at my age participated. Who is going to be the person who will not cope with reality? And I scored first place. I took 70% of all votes. <laughs> and you know what? They were right. I do not get along with it. I want change. One big reason of who I am are my parents. I was their first child when they were 21 years old. They were open-minded and spirited. And thinking about my childhood, it feels like I get this deep understanding of what connects us and why we're here, being dependent on someone to give you food and love, to be free, to learn, to be inspired, to discover, and to be surprised. Free to let anyone in, the only currency is a kiss. We were all children, and sometimes I get struck by the belief that we are all a big family, in fact, seven billion strong. And we are grown up now and bound by the constraints of nature. Here we strive to share our choices with the future generations to come. Climate change is a reality, and global resources are getting sparse. What is your individual role that you're playing here? What what if you like carrots? How are they going to impact people and the planet? So there it happened. I came along the study and I got stuck. I could not let go of it up to this day. 31% of greenhouse gas emissions originate from our food consumption, and we can reduce them by half by eating meals that are affordable, healthy, delicious, and where we also make smart decisions on reducing the environmental footprint. And it's not just about CO2. This food is special. By scaling down on emissions, you equally scale down on oil consumption, on air pollution, on land, on water. And everyone agrees that we only have one planet for humanity to strive. Food can be broken down into its ingredients, and each ingredient tells its own complex story. In order to make relevant decisions, we have to look at all the different points where it emits CO2, sum them up, and look at them. So take a look at the tomato. Grown anywhere in season, it just has a fraction of the CO2 footprint as the tomato that is grown in a greenhouse. Now, compare this to the asparagus that is flown in by an airplane. Look how much CO2 it is. is. And it doesn't really matter where the asparagus comes from when it's, when it's brought in by ship or, of course, grown locally in the, in the first place. Now, compare this to any food that is made out of animal proteins, and you'll immediately see what matters. There's a difference between beef and chicken due to the amount of meat then that is produced in the cow's stomach while breaking down the grass. And cheese also has a high CO2 impact because it's made out of cow's milk. So there's an easy take-home message here. First, start loving to eat greens. And third and second, eat seasonal and local because then you don't have a greenhouse or an airplane. So my partner, Judith, and three other fellow students, we discussed what we were going to do about this. And we agreed that we want to look at the CO2 impact of meals to be able to inform people on a level that is comprehensive. So it's easy for you to lean back in your favorite restaurant and just pick the meal that has been awarded being climate-friendly. And we also agreed that we must feel responsible to make it happen. 
So we decided to go to our university and have them label, label the meals to, to make it real, to communicate the value of our discovery. We were students full of ambition. <laughs> we, we called ourselves eternity, and we thought everyone can cook, and we're going to start a movement for climate-friendly meals. We, we went to our university, and they turned us down. They said, if something is going to happen at the university, it has to be rock-solid science. And they requested to have a professor involved. We worked hard, and we contacted a lot. They were all busy writing publications. But finally, we could find someone who was happy to support us. The deal was that we had to collect all available scientific data on each ingredient. And there are a lot. You see, there's a method. It's called life cycle assessment. You break down the production of food into its processes. You look what materials go into the process, what goes out, what happens with This is a careful, precise, and time-consuming analysis. In the end, you come up with a number that indicates the carbon footprint. Now you're able to make measurable decisions about what's good for our climate. And that's what we did. We basically assembled the most valuable and complete database to make CO2 calculations for meals. We went back to our university and they said, OK, you can make a pilot three weeks in one restaurant to see if this is actually something that interests people. Then we went to the restaurant manager and she turned us down. <laughs> she said she didn't see the purpose. Uh, how would she make money with something like that? So we recruited a bunch of more students. We sat down, we created marketing materials, flyers, posters, and information booths. We walked around on the campus informing everybody until the restaurant manager just couldn't resist to notice that this is actually something her guests want. Now, <laughs> you should see the look on, a, on the cook's face when we approached him and told him what we were going to do. Reduce CO2, fight climate change, and by the way, save the planet. What kind of funny hippies are those students, he must have been thinking. We talked with him over and over again until he made the idea his own, until he could see himself being the hero who will share the smile with the guests. And together, we created the most wonderful climate-friendly meals. This one was the most popular one, the good old spaghetti pesto with grilled vegetables. And out of 10,000 served meals, 2,500 persons chose our climate-friendly. The pilot was a huge success. The media came in, uninvited, into the restaurant, and they, they reported about it on the newspaper and on television. And then there was this very decisive moment. Kofi Annan came to visit our university. He was giving a speech but urging for the role of science in climate change. And we took the opportunity and talked with him, told him what we were doing. And he looked at us and said, this is not just something for the university, this is something for the whole of humanity. And we should go about it, and he trusts in us. And that we should continue to roll out, and we'll be successful. This moment was one of our greatest gratifications. Years of hard work had led up to this point. It gave us this great boost of energy and, and the confidence to step out of university and think big. We started programming a software to be able to share CO2 calculations at scale. And we've just recently launched our beta test, and more than 100 persons and restaurants have signed up, and it's great for us to discover how they find inspiration and creativity in, in creating climate-friendly recipes. And this is what's happening exactly right now. Together with a partner, we're going to roll out daily climate-friendly meals in several hundreds of restaurants, with their cooks being the climate heroes. They will lead the beginning of sustainable cuisine. And with them, we're going to set a standard so that many more will follow. There are a quarter million restaurants in the next market, and that's our target. We will continue to roll out. Now, let's take a step back. It's not easy to live on one ton of CO2 in our society. It's not driven by standard human behavior. It's complex. 
We need to break it down into little steps so each of us is able to commit. But with food, I can't help to think. It's so simple and yet so delicious. Everyone can cook. And when my grandmother cooks for me, I just cannot say no. And I mean, even she, she is cooking climate friendly for the whole family. So if we would choose to eat climate friendly three times a week, we could save one billion tons of CO2. There is nothing like that effective. There is no technical miracle that could do so much with so little. So my wish is that you will cook climate-friendly for the ones you love, because this is where it all begins, and each of us can join, and together we'll add to this great picture, a picture that is part of the future we want to live in. Thank you.